Israel is warning its military campaign against Hamas could last several months. The Israeli Defense Forces say the next stage, a widely anticipated ground offensive, would happen soon. Here's our correspondent, Yolan Nell. A sleepless night in Gaza. From afar, the flashes of successive Israeli airstrikes in Gaza City as Israel steps up its bombing campaign. And amid more and more destruction and a mounting death toll, the UN is warning of a catastrophic humanitarian situation. Over the weekend, more than 30 lorry loads of aid were allowed into Gaza from Egypt, carrying food, water and medicines. It's just a fraction of what entered daily before Israel put the Hamas-controlled territory under siege. Confirming the deliveries, the UN's humanitarian chief, Martin Griffiths, called it a glimmer of hope, but said further supplies were desperately needed. With more than a million displaced people, some now living in this UN tent city, there are urgent needs. People inside Gaza need the most basic necessities such as food, water, fuel and access to health services, so, so there's still a far, far way to go. Israel has signalled that it will be sending its tanks and troops into Gaza in the next stage of this war. After the deadliest attack in the country's history, it says it aims to crush Hamas. It will take one month, two months, three months, and at the end there will be no more Hamas. Before Hamas makes contact with our tanks and our infantry, they will know the shells from our air force. And Israel is also striking in Lebanon, as along its northern border, its troops fight the powerful Lebanese armed group Hezbollah, raising fears of a wider regional conflict. Then there are other complications in Israel's military offensive in Gaza. More than 200 hostages being held by Hamas. Some of their families have been meeting the president with a simple message, bring them home. Yolande Nell, BBC News, Jerusalem. And we'll be speaking to Yolande at live, um, she's with me live in just a moment. But just to bring you uh, an update, there's been a briefing by a spokesperson for Israel's Defence Forces. Uh, they've now raised the number of hostages uh, believed to have been taken into the Gaza Strip to 222. Uh, Israel says the number has gone up because of the foreign nationals involved in that number and that made it difficult to, to ascertain. But it is now 222 hostages believed to be inside Gaza. Uh, Daniel Hagari, the IDF spokesman, also said that the number of Israeli soldiers that have died in the last two weeks uh, so since this increase of hostility, since that unprecedented attack inside uh, Israel, um, that is 308, so 308 Israeli soldiers confirmed dead over the last two weeks. Yoland, Yoland Nell is, is, with, is with me now, Middle East correspondent. Amongst those soldiers, uh, Yoland, we've heard from Israel's military, that includes some that are already going into the Gaza Strip trying to look for those hostages. That's right. So one of the soldiers who was killed overnight, we understand, um, was on one of these small-scale raids going into Gaza to try to find information about the hostages. Um, we knew from last week that there had been some other uh, small efforts like this. It's not the ground invasion that Israel is talking about. We are expecting that to come soon. That's what the Israeli defense minister has said. Uh, this is something specifically uh, around the hostage situation. We've also heard from Israel that it's stepped up its airstrikes ahead of that widely expected ground invasion. Uh, it says it's targeting that at Hamas infrastructure before it goes in en masse on the ground. But we've also, of course, been talking about the suffering of Palestinian civilians stuck inside the Gaza Strip. Israel had been asking civilians to move south away from its main bombardment, but the south was also hit overnight. That's correct. So the Israeli military says something like 320 targets were hit overnight but what we're hearing is that 60 of those um, were in the south of the Gaza Strip that's the area that people from the northern half of the Strip more than a million people were told to leave to for their own safety um, and we've seen you know pictures coming out from Khan Yunis one of the main towns in the south of funerals taking place uh, there are children who are among the dead 
Now, according to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, that's got the biggest footprint of any of the UN agencies in Gaza. It has a lot of people uh, taking shelter in uh, one of its warehouses there, something like 8,000 people. And it's been saying to the BBC this morning that what it's seeing with supplies so short in the south, people down to about one litre of water each a day, small amounts of bread, what it's now seeing with also the, the south not appearing to be a safe place for people to shelter is that some people are going back north, going back to their original homes.